Welcome, brothers and sisters, to day six of the fasting and prayer. We give God all the glory. We thank God who has helped us, who has kept us to this final day of the fasting and prayer. We thank God who has been with us since Sunday and seen us through each of the days of the fasting and prayer, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, today is Saturday. And we thank God for all the teaching and all the lessons that we have learned. Today is a day of sharing lessons learned, the knowledge that the Spirit of God has imparted to us so far. So I believe every one of us is prepared. Glory be to God. Who wants to go first, please? Open the line and the line is... Good evening, yeah. Pastor. Yes, good, good evening, Brother Sonny. And let's get this uh, quick because we have quite some prayer points to go through. All right, Brother Sonny, go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, Pastor. Uh, I want to start by saying that... Uh, it has been wonderful the last uh, six days waiting upon the Lord. And uh, I want to thank God for this particular spiritual exercise that we've been through. Uh, I have learned a lot of things from this particular program. And uh, there are so many things that actually come into my mind. You see, Pastor, in the, in the book of uh, Philippians, Chapter 4, the Bible says in verse 19, and uh, it says, But my God shall supply all your, uh, all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yes. Here the Bible is talking about God is to supply all of our needs. So there, is, there are no limitations in every aspect of our life as the redeem of the Lord. When the Bible says all of our need, it means all. It means there are no reservations. It means in our health, in our finances, in our social life, in all aspects of our life, God is able through Christ to meet our demands, to meet our needs on daily basis. So this is very, very important. And I've also come to know, I really spend much of my time reading the Bible, the Bible that, that you've sent, but I really focus on John, the book of John from chapter one down to chapter 11. And I've come to realize that redemption really costs God a lot. It costs God to send his only begotten son to come and die for us. And the Bible says that even when we were sinners, Christ came and he died for us. And in the second Corinthians, Chapter 5, verse 21. The Bible says that God made his own son to become sin. Christ became sin for us. He became sin. So that we become righteous before God. These are wonderful experiences that are totally learned. And then I also come to realize that redemption, like I said earlier, really cost God a lot. But God made it very simple. Because when I read how the Jews came to Jesus, and they were asking him, they asked him, what are the things that we should do so that we, we know that we are doing the work of God? And I was afraid as a person, what Christ is going to tell them, it's going to be a lot of difficult things to, to, you know, to be done. But I was surprised when Christ answered them and said that the work of God is for them, including myself, to believe in his only begotten son, whom he had sent to die for us. So these are the things I have learned, and I really appreciate you, and I also thank God for giving you the, the, the grace to lead us all through throughout the six days. And I want to believe that whatever God has done in my life throughout this period will come to remain forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Sonny, for sharing your lessons learned. So if we were to take that into context of what we want to focus on, the blessings, 
You've said everything, yeah? Uh, quoting from Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And then you zoomed in back to, um, I believe that's John 17.3, if I recall correctly, when you said, Jesus said, the work of God is that you should believe in God and in Jesus Christ. This is eternal life. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And that's similar to the answer from the, uh, the, 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 the question the Jews asked that you referred to. Anyway, they should lead to what should they do to be saved? They believe in uh, the Son of God. Okay, so I believe that you have also written down your seven key areas. Because as I also shared with us, Jesus Christ said in the book of Luke, chapter 11, you remember the woman with the uh, the woman from the crowd, like we in one of our study sessions, said Jesus said such great things, and the people were excited. Wow, we have never heard it in this manner before. In verse 28, that woman shouted out and said, Blessed be the womb that gave birth to you and the breasts that you saw. And Jesus said, Much more than that. <laughs> Blessed are those who hear this word and keep it. Who hear this word and do it. So we must apply what we have learned. And so I'm really gonna ask, we add to what are the blessings? So thank you, you've enumerated uh, some first, everything is possible with God. And then, Specifically, we it, to, 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 to have this redemption is simple. That's really your point because Jesus said, believe in me. All right, let's hear others. Who wants to go next? Lessons learned and narrowing it also to the blessings that are meant for the redeemed. This was the action. Uh, say it again. And you don't, you don't have to be restricted again, please. Write your seven key restoration blessings and it doesn't have to be yours, okay? It's what you understand. Restoration blessings of God as the redeemed of the Lord. There must be something that we all will hold and say, this is my portion. Yes, I think Brasoni, sorry, I missed your summary. You also talked about uh, uh, healing. Okay, please go ahead. I have already put one question down. You remember the three laws that we have covered? What are the applications of them? Uh, good evening, brothers and sisters. <laughs> I will really say this has been a week of rich spiritual blessings. It has been so amazing. I, in fact, I can sum it up to what is recorded here at Romans chapter 11, verse 33 to 36. It says, oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgment and his parts beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them for from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We have learned a lot, so many riches of wisdom and benefit from this word of God. From what we have learned, I, I think what really stands out for me is that spiritual paradise. Understanding that 
as the redeem of the Lord. I enjoy spiritual paradise. By that I mean, I can see, I can visualize the kingdom of God ruled by Jesus Christ. Theocracy, a government of God where Christ has been installed as the king. Can you imagine what that kingdom will be? Like uh, we read Isaiah, a prince of peace. A, a son had been given to us, a child is born. And this child is the prince of peace. Yeah, yeah. so in this kingdom, peace will be abundant. Amen. As a subject of this kingdom, so this, that is what I say, spiritual paradise. I see the peace, I see the joy, I see the blessing beyond expectation. That is what I, the depth, the depth of this blessing, I cannot explain it. And this take, has taken me to a level which I say, Father, thank you so much for you to help me to understand that in this paradise, I am, I don't, I have a king who is fighting for me. Yes. I have a warrior who is going before me and none other than Christ Jesus. I say, Father, thank you that I don't need to fight my spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. In this kingdom, I have handed over my spiritual battle to you, the source, the originator of all spirits. So it, it, I, it, I, it has given me peace. It has given me relief. It has given me freedom. So and I know since this is spiritual, since this is not something I can see, now my plan is to all the time yield, surrender to Christ, the king of this kingdom. Pray constantly to remain in this kingdom mm -hmm. so that I can continue to enjoy this benefit. Read the Bible, ask for God's Holy Spirit because without his spirit, we will be talking. Mm -hmm. So Holy Spirit will fill us. Holy Spirit will guide us so that we will keep on enjoying this blessing because God has already done it for us. Mm -hmm. Like my brother Sonny said, the, the redemption was made simple, the blood of Jesus. Like we read the other, this blood is free. You don't mm -hmm. need to, it's once for all time. So I can, I, I can keep on talking and talking and talking, but it's <laughs> just overwhelming. Yeah. Is the, the depth is so deep. The riches is, is deeper than any ocean, wider than any width, and higher than any heights. Glory be to Great God. Great is our God. Thank you, God, Glory. for your greatness and your goodness yeah. towards us. Yeah. We thank In God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. One key point you've mentioned there. He said it is spiritual, and since I don't see it, I need to pray, study the word, and rely on the Holy Spirit. And I just want to add, yes, uh, to this is where faith comes in because we don't see it is by faith. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So please, next person. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, just to add my own bits, I think to what everybody has said, spoken earlier. What is really striking for me personally is that, like Auntie said yesterday, where would I have gotten money? Where would we have gotten the money to buy the bulls, the goats, and all of that for the sacrifice? But God gave us a perfect body in his son, Jesus Christ. The thought of that alone is overwhelming. And it's not just the money. Even when you buy it, those, those, the blood of the bulls and the goats were just covering the sin. They were not able to mm -hmm. take it in. 
So yeah. I don't know. he's the master planner. What he did is just awesome. It's mind blowing. And if we have Jesus, we have everything. That is so encouraging and refreshing to me. So thank you for the teaching and thank you for all the lessons. There are many I've taken, but that's just the one that strikes me most. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The special body that is perfect and adequate. Perfect and adequate. It meets every requirement. It meets the requirement for righteousness. It meets the requirement for the forgiveness of sins. It meets the requirement for the destruction of the works of darkness. It meets every requirement. Glory be to God. The blood of bulls only covers sin, but this blood is able to wash us and make us clean. Thank you, Lord. Please go ahead, next person. Thank you for sharing that. That's so profound. Lessons learned from the study so far. Yeah, go ahead, thank please. you. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much, Pastor for making this possible and also for including me in the program. Um, I've learned so many things and uh, just like you said, to go to the point, the blessings are the redeem of the Lord. I think I'll first of all talk about because I'm the, of the redeem of the Lord, I have been healed. I've been healed. Amen. I've been healed spiritually and also physically. All the days that we've done this exercise have been okay, but today has been, I've been very, very weak. And I just claim the verse in uh, is it Second Peter or First Peter that says, "By His stripes." Okay, Isaiah. First Peter two, First Peter two, twenty four. Okay. okay, by His stripes I am healed. So because of what Christ has done. I am healed. So yeah. I have God's heart is upon me. I am healed, not only physically, but also spiritually. And then the, the second point is that I'm God's child. And that brings me to the fact that Jesus is my brother. When we're doing um, John chapter 15, yeah. John chapter 15, Jesus is my elder's brother and it's because he has he came he died he gave up his body that special body that's why i have become the child of god and john chapter 1 verse 12 stands out for me for that point yeah and also another blessing is that i'm the righteousness of god the the passage you read was it yesterday in yeah. Roman it talks about my own version says, I am the holiness of God because of what Christ has done. He has obeyed God. Mm -hmm. He gave up that body and died for me. So I'm the holiness of God. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the fourth point is that I have been delivered from the power of darkness. Satan, we talked about uh, the law of input and output and the law of servitude. But I have been delivered from that law because of what Christ has done. So that really gives me a lot of um, encouragement. And the, the, did the fifth or the fourth? <laughs> I have God's the spirit. The fifth, yeah. I've got Holy Spirit in me. Jesus promised us the Holy Spirit. And once you have the, uh, the Son of God in you, you have the Holy Spirit. So I have the Holy Spirit in me. And because I have the Holy Spirit in me, the fruit of the Spirit is in me, that peace and joy and i have been praying for peace in my life peace in my family peace even in the world even in south africa here i'm praying for peace because many things are happening that cause us to to worry but i pray for god's peace and all these things we need god to have that peace so mm -hmm. i have the peace of god i have the joy of god i, I want i want people when they see me they see that joy of god radiating through me. And they say, ah, I want to serve the God this lady, this woman is serving because of the joy. 
many of us believers we carry long faces and because of the problems but i just mm. pray that god will help me that joy that just has given to me mm -hmm. yeah and then the, the other point is that i have access to the throne of god so i can go boldly to the throne of god hebrews for something talks about having direct access to the throne of god and the last one i will say that I am very fruitful. I am fruitful not because of the work I do, but because of Christ. Yeah. Because I abide in him and he abides with me, so it causes me to bear much fruit. I got that from Romans 15. So those are my seven points that I, I got, seven blessings. And then for the three laws, what stood out for me a lot is that law of substitution. Mm. And then you took us through the verticals 16, 8 to 10. It talks about the scapegoat. Jesus was the scapegoat. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Jesus was, was, he is the son of God and was with God. Yet mm -hmm. he became my scapegoat. Yes. So that mm -hmm. and I, I just picture that scapegoat in the desert when they, they send the scapegoat. The suffering and everything Jesus went through all that for by sake. And then 2 Corinthians 5 21 is the other verse in, in New Testament that stands out for me. That law of substitution. That though, because of what Satan had done and Adam had submitted to Satan's rule, Christ came. Christ came and took us away from that. And it's open for everybody. It's not only me. So I should be willing to tell others. I should be bold enough to tell others that Christ has done the work. He has finished the work. Thank you very much. So I will stop there. Thank you. Thank you. That was very elaborate. Uh, Sister Gertrude, thank you. You've gone through quite a number of points. And indeed, the law of substitution. So what Jesus has taken on my behalf, I can no longer be carrying it. Amen. He has become my burden bearer, so I become a fruit bearer. Glory be to God. I think what you should do, Ma, and the rest of us, is to take that law deeper and start thinking of what substitutes Jesus has done for you, for me, for us. As I've just said, he's my burden bearer. He became the burden bearer that I should become the fruit bearer. Not just fruit, much fruit bearer. Hallelujah, as our sister shared. So we must be fruitful, we must be a fruit. And that's consistent with God's plan for us because God bless man and say be fruitful and multiply. Fruitful in all areas. Okay, next person, please. Thank you very much. And sorry about uh, the break due to my line. I've changed from the phone now back to my laptop. So it should be much better now. Next person. Okay, for those we have online, because those that are on Facebook, they can only share uh, texts. So we'll focus on you to do the sharing. Um, I think we just have Brother Dara left. So Brother Dara, like I said, I will call that every one of us connecting here will share. So Brother Dara, you have uh, two minutes. After that, Joy, you will share two minutes, and then we will go into prayer. Come again. Uh, good evening, sir. <laughs> yes, good evening. Okay, for me, the there, there are a couple of things that have um, struck me in the course of this teaching since, um, since Sunday, but usually I just pick one and try to go deeper in that. So the second law, the law of servitude is one of the things that um, struck me deeply. I think about how that uh, the devil tricked Adam 
Adam had the entire power, what he named animals, that's what the form they took. I mean, so much power. And then someone else who didn't have that, uh, who, who was a fallen being, comes in with trickery and then deceives him to surrender his power and then become slave for him. All, every other person that came after him fell under that uh, slavery. You know, that was, it was a, a huge spinning. The moment I made those statements, it just, my head just kept spinning over, you know, what are the things? What are the ways? Because these things, the devil keeps doing them almost every time. What, are, what, yes. what exactly are ways where he's uh, using this against me, against my family, against people around me? How, I, how, I, how am I as an individual unconsciously submitting to the devil and losing? Because once that submission happens, whatever benefit that comes, to me as a redeem as, as a redeemer of the lord is lost you know so those are the things that i've just been pondering over in the course of this prayer um, for me thank you sir yes please let's go deeper into that because that's what this is about so what are the things that we unconsciously submit to the devil, or in what way do we, let's put it that way, not what are the things, what, in what way do we unconsciously or consciously submit to the devil that gives the devil room? Please, let's discuss that. Brother, I'll give it a go first. You brought this, which is so profound, indeed. I like this. In what way, yeah, unconsciously submit to the devil? Because this is how he operates. Please go ahead. Just give I think me one way. Okay. I think one way would be that uh, uh, it's from the area of being ignorant of our rights. Ignorance. Life. Yes. Ignorance is, is for me one of the biggest avenues. Okay. And what is the cure for ignorance? It's ignorance of our right as the redeemed of the Lord. I, I think I'll say it's been invested in studying scriptures yes. and going for life. Yes, yes, indeed. And not just reading, studying, investigating for specific topics, areas, principles of life. This is what uh, people don't do a lot. People take a whole lot of assumptions that they hear. Oh, pastor said this. This is where the Berean, Berean Christians were unique. And Paul commended them, right? It was Paul? Yes. And said they did not just hear the scripture, but they went back and studied and saw that those things that they were taught were true. Glory be to God. So that's one way. Ignorance. So both what causes and then the cure. So investing in studying the scripture and indeed this is really the one word that i came with today to tell us you must have scriptures that form your principles of life you must have scriptures that you have made to be a reality reality like when we're talking about by the stripes of jesus i am healed it doesn't have to be when you are sick i keep saying this it's got to be a life that you know this is my life. That's how we use the word of God. We talk about I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It, it must be something you have studied and studied and, you know, believe and trusted and use and apply that you know this is my life. It's not just head knowledge. It is a reality. We talk about joy. Joy, joy. Everything the Bible says, it does not have to be head knowledge or quotation from the scripture. You must take it from the Bible and make it life. Reality, that's the word, reality of life. So let's hear a second point. In what way do we unconsciously submit to the devil? Because it's a trickster. That's why the word unconsciously is fine ignorantly we submit to the devil and don't even realize 
except the Spirit of God comes to wake us up again. Yes, Sister Comfort, just mentioned. Uh, I would like to say also disobedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yes, disobedience and disobedience is sin. Even though the Bible says there is sin unto death and sin not unto death. If you're born again, you will be the one that will suffer the pain of disobedience. It's not going to be, especially if it is just an instructional disobedience that you've been told do something and you didn't do. It doesn't make you become a sinner as somebody who was not washed in the blood of Jesus, but it took limit the flow of the spirit and you will, of course you'll be the one that will suffer for it because when the holy spirit tells you do something god sees god knows all now there is the command of do something and there is the command of don't do something you see the difference don't do would often be a sin don't fornicate right that's already clearly written. If the Holy Spirit doesn't need to tell you don't fornicate, I hope you understand what I meant by what the Bible was teaching about sin unto death and sin not unto death. There are sins already written. In fact, if you go and study that Bible, it was talking about idolatry. Idolatry. Because they say little children flee from idolatry. Okay, but that's another level of study. I was just trying to remind us that there is a that 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 we 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 hurt ourselves if the Holy Spirit says do something and you don't. So again, we must come to that place of real, making it a your reality. Sometimes it will look foolish because some of the things, some of the instruction will not look logical. Like I shared with you, somebody called me about um, something they. The, it was a parcel of land in front of my, the, the, the land I bought from them, to be open about it. And they told, called me to discuss how much I should pay. In the first instance, I felt it was illegal for them to be talking about me paying for it, this place that is between the highway and the legal point that the fence should be. And the Holy Spirit told me, don't answer a word. Just go, listen, and that's it. So I heard that instruction, and I was, of course, very willing to obey it. I made up my mind that was it. So I came. In the course of the discussion, the person said something that made me open my mouth. <laughs> After opening my mouth, I remembered. And then things happened. It was like uh, this person came with whatever, I don't know. He became very authoritative from that point, almost like commanding me. But since I know what the spirit spoke, I was repenting inside and just listen. When he finished, I said, is it okay? Is it done? So he was giving me price, what I'm going to pay. <laughs> I left, I repented and then prayed and called him up and told him what I was was going to pay, and that was it. He couldn't even say a word. He just said, okay, go ahead. Totally different from what he proposed. So I understood better what the Holy Spirit was telling me. In fact, I remember the case of a sister as well. This is what this is about. Uh, in her marriage, things were happening. And she called me to talk about it. And it was a situation, in-laws, all those problems. And I just asked, I was led by the Spirit to ask, I said, what did the Spirit of God tell you about this matter? And she said, Pastor, why did you ask me that? I said, just go ahead and answer the question. She said, Pastor, actually, I heard very clearly. That's why I was shocked you asked me that question. He said, I heard very clearly, don't answer them. I said, so what do you want me to tell you? You see the way we behave at times? He was looking for a way out. I said, just do what the Holy Spirit told you to do. Don't answer a word. You see, it's very difficult. People are accusing you, abusing you, especially like the case of this situation that I'm talking about. It's difficult. But the Holy Spirit said to her, keep 
quiet, don't answer a word. And she didn't do this. In fact, the testimony she gave me is that she has gone through this situation several times, but this time it was different. She was able to keep quiet and not answer. Anytime her mouth wants to move because she felt pained, abuse, accusations, things, lies on her head. How do you stand that? You see why I was talking about sin not unto death, but when you miss, you fail to obey the instruction, you are the one who suffers for it. She held herself, she kept it. He said, these people, the whole people got so confused because this was totally different from her that they knew. And they didn't know how to handle the situation. Then they turned around and, fight and fought themselves. And that's how she got her freedom. From that day, everybody respected her because she now knew how to handle them. When they brought their trouble, she kept keeps quiet or she kept quiet. Okay. This is uh, this is uh, indeed big. Please, is there somebody else who wants to mention something? Let me add one that will challenge us. When it comes to the devil, remember the Bible says resist the devil. When we fail to resist him, he also takes advantage of us. So you must resist the devil. And you resist him with prayer, with the word of God, and with sometimes open rebuke. Standing, remember, love goes with justice. Love goes with justice. So there are moments for tough love. Like people keep taking advantage of you and you cannot open your mouth and say enough is enough. They're going to, because the devil just sees that as weakness and will continue to send such root and wicked people to you, even amongst brethren. Of course, you know, Paul suffered that as well. So you must know when it is uh, to be endured and when to say enough is enough, you devil. Even if you can't say it openly, go to the place of prayer and say enough is enough. Get, out, get behind me, Satan. Okay, I think we've taken three. Anybody who wants to mention one more? Because this is what this is about. Anybody who wants to go ahead and mention one more? We've talked about ignorance, disobedience, which we've elaborated with some examples. And then when we fail to resist the devil, and we know how we resist him by countering with the word of God what the devil is saying or doing by prayer and by open rebuke, standing up and saying, get behind me, Satan. With that, we want to bring the interactive session to, a, to the end by prayer. I didn't hear any question, so let us pray. We want to pray together with the prayer point that we shared. So very quickly, let's open our mouths and thank God. Thank God who has kept us and has seen us through these six days. Thank God for his goodness and his mercy provisions, etc. Go ahead, Heavenly Father, we thank you. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your provision for me and for my family and for my brothers and sisters. Lord, I thank you. Thank you again for the blood of Jesus that has redeemed us. Heavenly Father, thank you. Go ahead and tell him, Father God, thank you for forgiving me all my sins and for redeeming me by the blood of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for canceling every consequence of sin in my life and family. Heavenly Father, I thank you for canceling every consequence of sin in my life, my family, and my entire lineage. Expand that prayer. Father, thank you for canceling every consequence of sin because you have forgiven me and you have counseled every consequence of sin in my life and in my family and in my lineage, my mother's lineage, my father's lineage, my in-law's lineage, the associations that I belong to and have associated with past and present. Thank you, Lord, for 
forgiving their own sins and canceling every consequence of sin in those associations, in those lineages. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Pray and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for making me a new creation in Christ Jesus. I receive from you, my Father, the power and strength to walk in holiness for the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, by that body that was crucified for me, offered and sacrificed for me, I receive power and strength to walk in holiness for the rest of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, raise your voice to heaven and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for destroying the works of darkness and for translating me into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the Son of your love. And thank you for the kingdom authority that you have given to me as the redeemed of the Lord. Go ahead and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the power and the blessings of the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus that you have bestowed upon me. Heavenly Father, let me enjoy these blessings, all the blessings of the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus, the blessings of the redeemed of the Lord that you have bestowed upon me. Father, let me enjoy them all forever, forever, all the days of my life. Here on earth, I will enjoy them till I come to be with you in eternity. In the name of Jesus, now open your mouth and declare those blessings. Father, let me enjoy the blessings of righteousness. Let me enjoy the blessings of health and divine healing. Let me enjoy the blessings of divine prosperity, divine protection, divine promotion, your joy and your peace all the days of my life. Go ahead and list them. Declare those blessings as you have written them down. This is the time to present what you have written down as the blessings of God that you want to see manifest in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Open your mouth and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for making your kingdom to reign over me. Heavenly Father, I submit myself to that tool over my life, my family forever. In Jesus' mighty name, Father God, let your kingdom continue to reign over me. I submit and surrender to your kingdom, the kingdom of God, where Jesus Christ rules. Lord Jesus, rule over me. I confess you are my king. You are my Lord. Rule over me. Reign in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, reign in my family. In the mighty name of Jesus, reign in everything that concerns me. All aspects of my life. Lord Jesus, reign. Heavenly Father, reign. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Now raise your voice and say, Heavenly Father, Almighty God, thank you for the special sacrifice and offering you made for me, for my redemption. Thank you for that special sacrifice and offering of the body of Jesus Christ that you made for me, for my redemption. Oh God, my Father, let everything that that body has taken away goodness and disease, sin, all evil that the body of Jesus has taken away, poverty that the body of Jesus has taken away because he took away the curse. And therefore he has taken away the poverty. Everything the body of Jesus has taken away, he has taken away every right and authority of the devil over me has been taken away. Jesus has taken it. All forms of evil have been taken away. And therefore, Father God, I pray that everything that body has had by the power of his substitution, let them go from me forever, forever, forever. In the name of Jesus, and let every blessing that that sacrifice has brought for me manifest now in my life and my family and in the life of all these, my brothers and sisters, in Jesus' mighty name, finally pray. Say, Heavenly Father, as a soul you have redeemed, I am a candidate for your Holy Spirit and power. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit and your power. 
let the gift of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit be complete in me. And Lord God Almighty, by the power of your Holy Spirit, let me do exploit in the name of Jesus and let my life glorify you, Almighty God, and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Almighty God, for I have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray to close. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time of reflection that you have given to us to reflect upon this teaching that you have taught us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, our King, our Captain, our Lord, our Master, our Savior, our brother, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Almighty God, for your Holy Spirit that has helped us, that has guided us, and we thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for the wisdom, for the understanding. We thank you for the manifestation of your power in us. We pray, Almighty God, that tomorrow will be even far greater. We pray, Lord, that you will take preeminence. We pray, Lord, that by the time we will finish this program tomorrow, everything in our lives will be shaped up. All that your children have written down as the blessings they desire of you, as the redeemed of the Lord, Lord will pray and agree that they will have all the blessings manifesting in their lives because you have already given them to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, our God, and we pray, Lord, that our lives will never remain the same. Everything will turn around for our good. Lord, your glory will overtake us and cover us as the water covers the sea. And we will do great exploit in your name. This and all the blessings that your power alone can give, we ask through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.